Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 12 on how to have a great successful engineering career. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about the importance of knowing how to take feedback. How to take feedback from your boss, how to take feedback from your co-workers. Why am I making a video about this? Because this is something that engineers are notoriously bad about. So why is that good news? The good news is, is that you can choose, you can make the choice to learn how to take feedback. And because everybody else is going to be messing this up so badly and you're going to do it well, that's going to be your differentiating strength. You're going to get ahead in your career because why? you know how to take feedback. All right, and this is one of the things, I think it's a real problem in the engineering community because engineers tend to be very highly educated. They seem to be a little bit arrogant. They're very confident in themselves. They sometimes have the attitude that they're always right. So you kind of have among really good engineers, and I mean, these are smart people and these are highly trained people and these are effective people, but they kind of can get into this mindset that they're always right. And because of that and because of their pride, they have trouble accepting feedback and you know I mean I'm not trying to trash engineers but I'm just saying that's that's sort of like a common failure a common character flaw that that really smart educated people can have and so that is your opportunity to get ahead of the crowd by not having that problem and so uh, you know like like I had let's say I had two uh, people that worked for me and one of them was like one of the most highly trained PhD physicist in the uh, world and very very famous you know all kinds of papers all kinds of uh, credentials and accolades in his career and the other guy was a engineer with just a master's degree and he wasn't from such a from such a great school and so you had one guy like way up here technically uh, reputation and the other guy was kind of down here okay so that really uh, kind of high-end guy uh, gave him a project he agreed that it was a good project for him to work on and we were trying to do some high aspect ratio uh, nanotechnology some high aspect ratio microscopic mechanical elements as we were getting into it, kind of what I told him is, I said, look, uh, you know, it's really important that, you know, because I'd worked, you know, before nanotechnology, had worked a lot on integrated circuits. I said, man, you've got to, you've got to get your, 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 uh, your sidewalls vertical. You've got to tune your process so that you're getting a vertical sidewall because it is very hard to get a vertical sidewall. Well, he kind of didn't, didn't listen to me. And so he went on, he kind of jumped right into the design and did all of his physics and did all of his math and went in and, and fabricated the stuff. And he, uh, you know, basically, uh, it didn't work because the sidewalls weren't vertical enough. And he really hadn't listened to that little piece of advice. So, okay. So sometimes people don't listen and, you know, he came in, he's really disappointed. Look, this stuff didn't work. And, and, you know, man, you know, he was really kind of down about things, uh, about things not working. So, okay, you know, I didn't say anything at that point because it's like you don't want to really pile on. And so I, uh, you know, kind of gave him a chance to, uh, you know, recover a little bit. And then as part of sort of feedback for him, you know, I said, okay, Joe, I want to talk to you. You're a really smart guy. You're doing great work. You're having an impact on the company. Really appreciate what you're doing. But there's something I need you to think about and work on. And and you know he kind of like he, immediately he bristled like like you know don't criticize me. Don't criticize me. I can't take criticism. So immediately you saw the body language that he did not want feedback. Okay. Uh, and then what I told him is I, I'll tell you Joe. Sometimes you're really smart, but sometimes you know you don't listen to people around and I couldn't even get the rest of the sentence out I am a good listener I'm one of the best listeners you're ever gonna listen to I'm gonna this and that and, you know he started telling me all the ways that I was wrong okay well first of all if he had been a good listener what would have been the first thing he would have done let me finish my sentence okay but he didn't even let me finish my sentence until he jumped in interrupted me and started telling me about uh, what a good listener he was so I want you to kind of think about that think of all the years that he went to college and think of all the work that he had done and think of all the time that he was spending at work and all of his hard work all of it 
could sort of add up to, to nothing if he doesn't learn how to take feedback. Because was I trying to trash him? Was I trying to put him down? Was I trying to question him? No. I wanted to help him become a better engineer. I wanted to help him move up in his career. I wanted to help him position himself for bigger raises because he's having more impact. And I see one of the reasons he's not having the impact that he could is because he doesn't listen and he doesn't take advantage of knowledge and expertise of people around him. But I couldn't get that in. He couldn't take feedback. So it's not like you go out and fire a guy like that. But can you clearly see what happens? His career is what? Flatlined. His career is flatlined because he is never going to be more effective because he can't listen to anybody that tells him that there's this little thing that you want to work on. And so if you cannot accept that there are things that you, you might be a great person, but no matter how good you are or no matter how poor you are, there is always opportunity for improvement. But if you can't accept and you can't understand that there are things that you could do to improve, and that doesn't mean you're a horrible person, that means everybody can improve. But if you can't listen and you can't take that, your career is going nowhere. And it's going nowhere for kind of two reasons. Number one, you can't take the feedback, so you're never going to actually understand what you need to address, and therefore you're ne never going to actually improve it. And so from just a sort of quantitative sense, an unambiguous sense, your career flatlines because you're not improving. You're as good as you can be doing things on your own and not listening to anybody. Boom, you're flatline. But the double whammy is I kind of look at you and I say, okay, this guy has these issues. He's not going to listen. He's not going to change. I don't view him as a person who would have management potential, or I don't view him in a leadership position. And so all of a sudden, not only is his career flatline, but his sort of overall position in the company is just not going to go anywhere. I put him over in this little box, in this little box of people, I think, people that are good enough to keep, but are never going to improve. And I just put him in that box. Okay, let's talk about the other guy, the guy that uh, he has a master's degree in engineering, not a PhD, and he didn't go to MIT, he went to a state school, and so he doesn't have these glorious academic credentials, okay? And let's say the situation with him is, is that, I, you know, he works in the test lab, and he's always, you know, testing integrated circuits and stuff, and, and we have this really, really, really important lot that comes out, this batch of integrated circuits that comes out. And he's there working with this other guy and they get the wafer out and it's really not their fault. They're being careful, but they go to put the wafer on the, the uh, tester and the, the little hose comes off the vacuum wand and the wafer falls on the ground and shatters. Okay, well kind of in a nervous way he laughed like oops and then kind of laughed and the two of them laughed. Okay, now they didn't do it on purpose. It wasn't their fault. Accidents happen. They were being careful, but they laughed when it happened. And I understood it was sort of a nervous laughter. So I didn't say anything at the time, but later I called him in because I'd noticed that this happened, that things will go wrong, things will break, accidents happen. I understand that. You expect that in the in the world. And I just kind of sat down and I said, um, you know, Steve, I need to talk to you about something. Oh, okay. What do you what do you want? I say, Steve, you know, you're a really hard worker. You're having a lot of impact, and we really appreciate you. And I know that you're a very careful person. Uh, he says, okay, well, thanks. I said, so there's something that I, I, I need to talk to you about. And he says, oh, okay, what's that? So first of all, it wasn't bristled up. It was listening to me. It was like, oh, okay, I'm listening. And I said, Steve, even though you're really careful, when things do go wrong or when something happens around you, your reaction is kind of just a nervousness where you just start laughing like, and then you, 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 know, you laugh. And, and what somebody, when they see, see that, they think that you're not taking things seriously, that you don't know the seriousness of the fact that the wafer's broken and now we're, th we're going to be three weeks behind. And in that three weeks, our competitors might get ahead of us, that, that what I need you to think about is I need you to think about that, that when things break or go wrong, it's a bad thing. And your response needs to be a little bit more somber. And it's like, oh, man, this is bad. Okay, how do we recover? You need to be kind of somber and not 
uh, the, this kind of quirky habit that you have of laughing when things go wrong. He says, oh, wow, he says, yeah. He says, I do that, don't I? When something breaks, I have a tendency to laugh, and it's not funny. Okay, so you know what started happening? Things still happen, things still go wrong, but then he didn't have that reaction. What do I think? I think, this guy listens. This guy used to be operating here, now he's operating here. And that guy was the best guy that I ever knew at taking feedback. And you know what his career did? His career just excelled. Why? Because year after year, he was always getting better. Why was he getting better? Because he could listen and he could understand that I was trying to help him. He could hear what I was saying and then he could change because of it. Do you realize how, how rare that is? But one of the greatest differentiating strengths you can have in your career is to take feedback and to take it without being defensive and to take it without being argumentative. And man, I'm going to tell you something. Even if someone tells you feedback, even if they're wrong, even if you flat out know they're wrong, you should always have the same response. And so I'm going to tell you how to respond to feedback, whether you think the feedback is right or whether you think the feedback is wrong. Okay, I want you to do this because it's a choice you make. If you make this choice, your career is going to move forward. It is going to help your career. You make this choice. It doesn't matter if you agree with the feedback or if you disagree with the feedback. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter how the, how the feedback makes you feel. None of that matters. No matter what it is, this is how you respond. Somebody says, you know, Joe, I need to talk to you. Okay. And then, you know, you, you know, your body language, like really, oh, okay, what's up? And really listening and not, you know, don't bristle up, you know, just first of all, body language, okay. You know, nonverbal cues, I'm listening. You see, they see that. And then they say, Joe, I just, uh, you know, I really feel like that you are uh, taking credit for other people's work and it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt you if you keep doing that. I didn't do that, that, that. No, no, you don't do that. Okay, let's say that you never did that. Let's say it's an unfair accusation. Here's how you, here's how you respond. Okay, so they say, I think that you're, you're getting in the habit of taking credit for other people's work. You don't say anything. You just pause. And you just kind of listen. You know, I mean, there's a dead spot. You just sit five or ten seconds. And what do you do? You just say back to them what they said to you. You said, okay, so I need to understand that that what you're saying is, is that as you observe me and you see me in the workplace, you're seeing signs that I'm not being cognizant of uh, giving due credit to the people that I'm working for. So is that, you know, I just want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying right. So you say back to them what they said to you and they say, yeah, that's, that's what my concern is. And, and then second thing is you say how important the topic is that, that they brought up. Okay. Uh, okay, what I understand is, is that for me to have a successful career, and for this organization to be effective, it's very, very important for everyone to acknowledge the work of their coworkers, and it's important for me to always do that. And so that's a very, very important thing for me to understand. Okay, now you sort of have two choices at this point. Number one, you don't argue. Okay, you don't argue. You listen and you take it in because you just got hit out of left field with something and you don't want to have a knee-jerk reaction. If you need to react or you need to address it or you need to you know, go into more depth, do it a day or two later or a week later after you've had a chance to calm down, breathe deeply and contemplate what might have been that would make them say that? Is it just they're crazy and mean and don't like you? Or could there have been something behind what they said? Okay, so when someone gives you feedback, you know, body language says you, you're interested in listening. You don't say anything for a few seconds. You repeat back to them calmly what their concern is. Make sure that you understand it. Now, am I understanding this right? And then you state 
that what their concern is is that that's something that's really really important to you and that's something that you've got to do a good job on if that's something there's some issues man thank you okay always thank them for their for their feedback okay man thank you for bringing this because i just i just never realized that there was this perception you know i need to really i need to go away and kind of contemplate this now if there's one thing that you kind of could do if you thought was appropriate you could ask them for more data and say okay man you know this is a pretty big issue could you give me two or three examples so that so that i can understand because i just was not cognizant of this and if you could give me two or three examples then that would help me to understand kind of like specific areas where i need to change so then you ask for more data okay help me understand you know where were some examples where i'd done this okay and then they give you some examples and then you might kind of go away well you know yeah i really did that i just didn't think it was such a big deal but i remember i gave that talk and yeah joe had taken the pictures and i didn't put on the slide that joe took the pictures okay that was an oversight or, or you know you, you can sort of go away and reflect on it but since we're prideful as engineers, we tend to just bristle and then we tend to say things that we shouldn't. So when you get feedback, my suggestion is just don't say anything except repeat it back and then ask for more information. Then sometimes when you go away, you see, well, maybe there was a little bit of a basis for, for what they said. And then even if it's baseless and you just took a hit, you took an unwarranted hit that you had given credit and this was just an unwarranted hit, okay, it's not the end of the world. What is your boss going to think about you? He's going to think, hey, that's a guy that listens. That's a guy that takes feedback. That's a guy who might be leadership material. That's a guy who might be management material. Why? Because he can take feedback and no one else can. Okay, I hope this has been useful. Am I just crazy out in left field? You guys that are in industry, have you noticed what I'm talking about, about engineers, or is it just I was working uh, with a bunch of crazy people? I'd be really happy to hear some of your feedback on this stuff, and your comments down below are really helpful for the uh, for the people uh, who watch this channel. You know, people actually read the comments and they benefit from them. If you like this video, think about giving us a thumbs up. Think about subscribing to the channel. Think about sharing this on your social media with other people. Let's try to get some more subscribers in here. Okay, this is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.